All right, it's finishing writing the code. All right, pretty cool. Workflow successfully created and validated. But let's see, are these real articles? Title, Elon Musk can't control his AI. Yeah, that sounds like a real article. In this video, I'm gonna be testing the new Opus 4.1 and an MCP to see how good it can build an entire end-to-end -end workflow using just natural language. Normally you would spend days, sometimes weeks, mapping out the flow, debugging logic, and Googling error messages until you have somewhat of a finished product. But if you could skip all that and just type exactly what you want to happen and have the new Opus 4.1 build it for you, that's kind of scary. If this really works, this could mean faster builds, money saved, and it could be more scalable for businesses. But the real question is, is Claude's most latest and powerful LLM better than a human? Let me briefly explain a few things. Claude just released their Opus 4.1 not too long ago, and it's their most advanced AI model from Anthropic. And what's really interesting is when you compare Claude's SWE Bench to OpenAI's O3 model, it's way superior. And if you don't know what SWE Bench is, it's a benchmark designed to evaluate a large language model's ability to handle software engineering tasks like coding. NADN is a tool I'm very familiar with and use for my own business and for my clients to help them automate their tasks by connecting different apps and services like Gmail, Notion, OpenAI, just to name a few. And the most important part, I do it without needing to know how to code. A message control protocol or MCP serves as a bridge between NADN's workflow automation platform and AI models. This basically lets them understand and work with the NADN nodes a little more efficiently, which will then allow us to more accurately create our AI automations with natural language. The first thing you're going to do is head over to this GitHub repository, which is basically just online storage. But here's what we'll find our NNN MCP. A lot of this is going to look very intimidating, but don't worry about it. It's actually my first time doing this too. So if I can do it, you can too. I will leave a link to this in the description. This repository has a step-by-step -step instruction on how to get everything started. It looks intimidating, but I'm going to go through it step-by-step. -step. So if we go down and we see Node.js, we're going to click that. All right, this is going to let us run JavaScript. Hit get Node.js. And then we're going to go over to uh, macOS installer package. Go ahead and install that. Go ahead and follow the instructions on installing node.js once you're done and have it installed we're going to move on to the next step we're going to head back to github and now we're going to run directly with npx basically what that means is we're going to copy this link go ahead and copy it type in command space type in terminal paste that there hit enter and your version should be up to date you say here 22.18 that's the one we want now we're going to download the most basic version of claude onto our desktop i'm just going to go with the cheapest plan i don't think you need the pro plan or anything like that so we're going to go over to quick claude Go to settings and you can only do this through the desktop app. We're going to hover down to developer, edit config. I'm going to right click this, open with text edit. Now we're back in GitHub, but we want the full config here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, highlight this, paste that there. Now there's two things we're going to need, our NNN URL and our NNN API key. Once you've created an account for an NNN, to get your URL, just hover over cloud, copy everything to the left. I'm going to go back here. We're going to delete this and replace it with our URL. I'm going to delete that extra H. Also, make sure you don't have this slashed here. So your URL should look pretty much the same except for this, where it says Novamate here. That's my URL. To get your MPI key from NNN, you're going to go to settings at the bottom left. Select that. Then you're going to go over to NNN APIs, create an API key, title it, hit save, copy that key, delete this, paste it there. Then hit Command S to save it. Now all you have to do is quick Claude, restart it back up. And when you hover down to tools and search, you should be able to see your NNN MCP like this. We have now given Claude access to all the NNN tools and instructions on how to use them, but we're not done yet. Now we're back in our GitHub and we're going to scroll down until you see Claude project setup. This is going to give us the best results for our NNN MCP by basically giving it a prompt so it better understands how to use NNN. I'm just going to go over a few things and read it to you here. You're an expert in NNN automation software using NNN MCP tools. Your role is to design build and validate NNN workflows with maximum accuracy and efficacy. In the discovery phase, find the right nodes, think deeply about user requests and the logic you are going to build to fulfill it. Pre-validation phase, validate before building. And it goes on and on and on. You can go over this yourself, but this will optimize your MCP. So go ahead and copy this. Then we're going to go back to Claude, go to projects. I'm going to name it NNN MCP. Hit create project, then hit set project instructions. We can go ahead and paste that prompt right there save instructions i'm going to set this to opus 4.1 now i'm pretty sure we just use natural language and tell claude what we want to build claude make an edit in workflow that runs every morning at 7 30 a.m pulls the top five ai headlines from news api formats them into a neat bullet list and emails them to me via gmail all right let's send it off this is going to pop up i'm going to say always allow you can see it's thinking it's taking a bit so the first thing it did 
is search for the nodes that it'll need for the workflow. Then is getting the essential configuration for each node. Now it's giving us a visual representation of the workflow architecture. So we're gonna have a schedule trigger, HTTP request to news API. It's gonna have a code node to format for the articles and then a Gmail node to send the email. Yeah, that sounds pretty straightforward. All right, it's finishing writing the code. All right, pretty cool. Wow, beautiful. Let's see. So now it's validating the complete workflow. All right, something interesting just happened. It says, I need to fix some connection errors. Let me update the workflow with proper node name. And it's fixing it and it's validating again. It's already been a couple minutes. So this is actually taking a little bit, but again, I'm not doing any of the work. Workflow successfully created and validated. I'm gonna go ahead and download this JSON. All right, let's import it. Damn, we're in trouble. That was a pretty simple workflow, but let's make sure it got everything correct. So I wanted to do 7.30 a.m. I don't know why it says all this, but it did have some instructions. So let's go back and see what it says. All right, here's the trigger, optional. Okay, so the cron expression, 37 star 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 means 30 minutes past 7 a.m. every day. Thank God I had an explanation because I had no idea what that meant. All right, let's look at the other instructions. Okay, so configure the news API. So create a news API account, get the free uh, API key. And then in the node, replace, replace your news API key here with your actual API key. Okay, let's just go ahead and do that. So this is the node it's talking about. So, okay, it has the correct URL. Crazy, you don't have to sift through all the documentation. Uh, it even did the query, which is gonna be this. It expanded it. I, I told it to just do AI, but it replaced it with artificial intelligence or AI or machine learning or GPT or LLM. That's that's wild. Sort by popularity, page size, uh, five, okay. And then the API key right here. It even gave the date, which is probably gonna be today's date. This on its own has saved so much time because I am myself still learning how to kind of like navigate through the documentation uh, for HTTP requests and all that. So to have Claude be able to do this for you in like a couple of minutes, that's, that's gonna save so much time. All right, I just grabbed my API key from News API, pasted it. Uh, let's see what's next. Actually, let's test this. All right, yep. Hold the data, hold all the data. Let's see, are these real articles? Title, Elon Musk can't control his AI. Yeah, that sounds like a real article. <laughs> GPT-5, cool, this is really cool. All right, this code node. I have no idea what any of this means. All right, let's see if there's any anything we need to do. Go back, um, no, nothing. Let's just execute it, see what it does. Oh. Okay, maybe it's just meant to make it look pretty. Yeah, it just filtered out all the junk. And now we have an um, email HTML, email text. Maybe this is a, like a really nice format. We'll see. I don't know how to read it, but uh, let's move on. And I'm pretty sure all we have to do is connect our email. Wow, I'm really impressed to be honest. Like this is my first time doing this, by the way. What? What the? So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in my email. Okay, let's see. And it will have, it's already dragged in the JSON um, HTML. What about the text? I don't see the text. I do see the date. Let's just go ahead and execute it and see what it does. Okay, let me check my email. Holy moly. This is the email and it looks so nice. Elon Musk can't control his AI. Got a brief summary. GPT-5 versus Gemini 2.5 Pro. Little summary. And you can go to the full article. And it's linked correctly. Gizmodo. This is crazy. So whether you have an AI agency or you have your own business and you're still learning how to build these automations, this is a really efficient way to kind of just try a bunch of different workflows to see if they work because it's so much faster. You can build 10 different workflows in the amount of time you would build one workflow manually. And I know the example that I used was really simple. So if you build a more complex workflow, it's still gonna save you a lot of time. You may have to go through it to make sure everything is done correctly. But as you can see, what it's able to do is pretty dang crazy. Now check out this video if you want to see how to build a full web app using only natural language connected to your end-to-end workflow and start charging people to use it.